It's Dan Abbott. I am making a short video on how to cut an Acme thread in SolidWorks. I had several students ask me how to do that. What we're looking at here is a blank for a bench vise. First thing you need to do is know what size hole you need. In this case, the student wants a 7 8 6 pitch Acme thread. So you need to know what the minor diameter is. I Double click, I looked that up, it's 0.6883 is the minor diameter of that. This is a several step process. The first thing we need to do is put a, a helix that has six spirals per inch, six threads per inch is, a, is comparable. Then we have to draw the profile of that Acme thread and then do a swept cut around it. In order to have it engaged though, we want the helix to start off the part. And there is when you use the thread tool, you can actually have an offset when you start. But when you use the helix tool, you have to start the helix itself off the part. So the first thing I'm going to do, go to reference geometry. I'm going to put in a reference plane. The plane is going to be based on this, and we'll bring it out one inch. That's close enough. So I'm going to put my helix on this um, plane itself. If we go to the helix tool, which is under curves, as features. This is a feature, curve, a feature tool, not a sketch tool. So I go here and say I want to put a helix, it's going to ask me, it is going to ask me to select a plane. I don't see where the pop-up came on, must be moving someplace, but it's basically saying pick a plane that you can draw a circle on and then draw the circle on that plane. In this case, what I'm going to do is convert entities. I'm going to say take that minor diameter circle right there, convert the entities of that onto the plane that I've created. Now I'm done, I'm going to get out of that sketch. Now I can go back to the, um, the helix tool. And the helix tool was something that asked me to pick the plane and then draw the circle, so it was waiting to come back in place. So it's based on that base circle. And I use the minor diameter because we're cutting this thread, not adding it in. I've already done this once, um, so it already has the right number, but I need 1 divided by 6. That's the distance from thread to thread, since there are six threads per inch. So I do that division here, and it comes out 0 0.166666 and goes and goes and goes. Now what I want is to make sure there's, and I could have started this closer as well. It doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure it starts outside and goes all the way through so that it has a nice clean entry and so it looks like an actual thread. So there's my helix. The next thing to do is to, to draw the thread profile. And the thread profile has to be drawn 90 degrees to the end of that helix. And this is the part that's a little bit tricky and that I had some difficulty with until I realized what I was doing wrong. I'm just going to hide this plane. We don't need it anymore. Now I'm first going to put a reference plane that's 90 degrees, and that means normal to a line drawn tangent to this helix at that point. So I go up to the reference geometry. I'm going to make a new plane. And what I'm going to do is pick the helix itself and pick the end of the helix and it's going to put a plane on the end. And you saw this once before when we did the uh, cotter pin. So now I've got that plane, now I can sketch on it. The easiest way to sketch on that is to look right at it, 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do, hit the space bar. I could actually have done this and then picked right here. But I'm going to hit the space bar to pick a view say let's go normal too. Now I'm looking down at it 90 degrees. What I want to do is cut a thread didn't mean to turn that on. Cut a thread that starts here and goes up into the part itself. Now I'm going to go to the machinery's handbook. In the machinery's handbook it shows you what an Acme thread looks like and an Acme thread looks like this and it shows you that it's a 29 degree angle. It's even in both sides and then it gives you some dimensions and these dimensions are all formula is based on the thread pitch and it tells you down here what they are. But what you can do is turn to the next page. This doesn't look exactly like your machinery handbook because I have the large print edition because it's 70. It's hard for me to read that little regular one. So I've got some numbers here. This is a six pitch thread. So the pitch is 0.16667, one divided by six. Now we look at the, pull this down a little bit, the height of the thread. Um, and the total height of the thread. Well, what we want is the total height of the thread because that's the void. So it gives us a number here and that's based on the formula H equals pitch divided by 2 plus an allowance. That allowance is over here actually plus half the allowance which is the difference between the major and the minor diameter. So 0 0.0933 I go back 
here knowing that and it's 29 degrees so now I'm gonna just sketch something now I can't really sketch on that point I wish I could I don't know why you can't exactly but what I need to do is to sketch on that plane right here and I need to draw something off of this and then move it into position I'm gonna draw the bottom of that thread right there and then because it's a symmetrical thread I'm gonna draw a center line that starts here and goes out to here now I'll draw another line and this one's gonna just come out at a bit of an angle at a bit of an angle we'll put the actual angle in in a minute and then I'll go down until it just touches here now I'm gonna use the mirror entities so that everything stays nice and symmetrical and we'll get rid of that and then I'm gonna use the mirror about and I'm gonna pick this comes around and looks like that so there's my basic thread shape right there first thing I'm gonna do is put a dimension between these two angle these two lines and the angle there is 29 degrees now the depth of that thread I took from the table so the depth of the thread is 0.0933 I'm gonna put that in here looks like this now that distance right here also something I'm gonna get from the table and that thickness is pardon me while I look it up the root 0 0.0566 so this distance right here 0 0.0566 so there's my Acme thread form right there now I'm done with this what I want to do and by the way it's got to be fully defined so I can move the whole thing around and you can see I can do that although I meant to have this stop right there so I can move this whole thing without changing the shape and that's going to be critical what I want to do now is to put a relationship between this and this unfortunately I can't do that directly I can't pick this hold down the control key and then pick this and then give it a relation all I can do is a fixed position what I can do though is pick the spiral itself hold down the control key pick that point and then add what's called a Pierce relationship so from here control key held down to there um, what happened to my Pierce relationship well sometimes you need to go up here instead of holding the control key down a little bit inconsistent but let's see if this works I'm gonna go down to display and delete relations add relation pick the helix I don't want the plane so pick the helix which is showing up as an edge we'll do that one more time just to make sure I didn't so I'm gonna pick this yeah there's the edge and I'm gonna pick this point and I should get Pierce as a relationship which I do so it goes over there that's now fully defined it's got a Pierce relationship and that is 90 degrees to the end of that helix so if I can sweep cut it along the helix I should end up with a nice looking Acme thread we'll come back out of that sketch now it's just a question of doing a swept cut so that's a feature swept cut I need to pick the profile that's this right here and I need to pick the path which is right there comes in and looks like that I'm gonna say go ahead and cut it and sometimes you get this even though it doesn't seem like it created any body so I'm gonna say let's do a select body that selects the base vice so that's what I want so now we'll just hide this just so we get it out of the way and we'll do the same thing with this we're not turning it off or suppressing it we're just hiding it now if I look at it from the side and then we cut it in half here and then zoom in you see we have a nice looking acme thread so that's how you would cut an acme thread if you really want an acme thread in a part in SolidWorks it's going to be very hard to mate another acme thread with it just because of the nature of that helical shape but if you want something that looks like an acme thread because you want it to be clear that it is that's the way you would do it